All right, chemical bonds are formed when valence electrons are either transferred or shared between atoms. And the point of creating a chemical bond is to satisfy the octet rule. This means that every atom would like to have eight valence electrons in its outermost shell because it makes it stable. There are three elements that are exceptions, hydrogen, beryllium, and boron, which we'll talk about more in depth later on. Um, ionic bonds are the types of bonds formed between a metal and a nonmetal. Metals will donate or transfer their valence electrons in the outermost shell to a nonmetal because underneath a metal actually has eight valence electrons and that makes it stable. So that's why it will readily give up its valence electrons in the outermost shell, whereas nonmetals want to acquire more to satisfy the octet rule, um, and that would make them stable, okay? So um, covalent bonds are when we actually share valence electrons between nonmetals. Remember, the metals are to the left of the stair step on the periodic table, whereas nonmetals are to the right, except for hydrogen, which is in the upper left-hand corner. So if we take a look at student exercise number one, and I gave you NH3 and Mg3 and 2, as examples of compounds, and I want to know which one has covalent bonds and which one has ionic bonds. Well, NH3 is nitrogen and hydrogen, which are nonmetals, and so therefore it will have covalent bonds. Mg3N2 has a metal, which is magnesium, and nitrogen, which is a nonmetal. That means it will be held together by ionic bonds. Okay, so covalent bonds are when we share valence electrons between nonmetals, and ionic bonds are when we transfer valence electrons from a metal to a nonmetal. Okay. Now, there are <clears throat> bonding theories which we use to predict how atoms are going to bond together to form molecules. The most common one is Lewis dot theory. That's what we'll be using here. That's where we use the symbols for the elements to represent atoms and dots to represent valence electrons. So what we're going to learn first is Lewis structures for ionic compounds. So I'm going to give you an example of potassium chloride, which is KCl. Potassium is in group 1A on the periodic table. So that means it's going to have one valence electron, whereas chlorine is in group 7A, that means it will have seven valence electrons. So the way that you form an ionic bond is the potassium, being the metal, is going to donate its one valence electron to chlorine. So it's going to be transferred over to chlorine to satisfy the octet rule to give chlorine eight valence electrons in its outermost shell, which will make it stable. When potassium donates its one valence electron, it forms a positive one charge, which is the usual charge that you would see above its group. Chlorine is then going to have eight dots around it, <clears throat> like this, and then it will have a bracket, and it will have a negative one charge because it accepted one valence electron. Okay, so you're always going to write the metal with its usual symbol and its charge in the upper right hand corner the non-metal will have eight dots around it. It will be in a bracket, and its charge will be in the upper right-hand corner as well. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples from the chapter handout. So student exercise number two asks you to draw the Lewis structures for MgO and BaI2. Okay, <clears throat> so MgO, I've got one magnesium and one oxygen. So I'm going to have one magnesium, one oxygen. Magnesium is in group 2A oxygen is in group 6A, okay? So that means magnesium has two dots on it, and then oxygen will have six. Magnesium wants to give up its two valence electrons to oxygen because underneath it has eight, which makes it stable. So I'm just going to draw some arrows to show you that those two valence electrons will leave and join oxygen, giving oxygen an octet. When magnesium donates its electrons, it forms a plus two charge. Oxygen will now have eight dots around it. It will be in a bracket, and since it accepted two valence electrons, it will have a negative two charge. Okay, now, for barium iodide, I'm going to make this look symmetrical, like this. Okay, I'm going to put barium in the middle and my two iodines on either side. Barium is in group 2A, whereas iodine is in group 7A. 
iodine has got seven dots on it. Barium has two. Barium wants to give up its valence electrons to iodine, but since barium has two valence electrons to give up, it needs two iodine because it can only give up one to each because iodine already has seven on it, okay? So barium's gonna give up those two electrons. It's gonna form a plus two charge. And then iodine's gonna have eight dots on it. It's in a bracket. It will form a negative one charge because it accepted one valence electron, so it looks like this. Now, I will also accept, instead of you having to draw multiple ions on paper, I will also accept if you just write Ba plus two and then an iodine with eight dots on it and a negative one on the outside and a little two subscript there to indicate that you have two of them. The choice is yours. Both are totally fine, okay? All right, let's do one more example. Student exercise number three. We're gonna use Lewis theory to predict the formula for the compound that forms between sodium and sulfur. So, if I'm combining sodium and sulfur, I'm gonna get the chemical formula for sodium sulfide, right? Because sodium and sulfur gives me sodium sulfide the charge on sodium is usually a plus one, that's on the periodic table. The charge on sulfur is usually a negative two, so you wanna cross those numbers in the charges to give you Na2S. That tells you how many of each atom you need in the Lewis structure for this compound. So you first have to write the chemical formula so you know how many of each ion have to be in your Lewis formula. So. I'm gonna have one sulfur and two sodium, so I'm gonna make it look symmetrical by putting sulfur in the middle and sodium on either side, okay? Sodium is in group 1A, so that means it will have one dot, and then sulfur is in group 6A, that means it will have six. Okay, so I've just made it look like this. So each sodium, being the metal, is going to donate its one valence electron to sulfur, so now it has eight valence electrons in its outermost shell. Sulfur, being the non-metal, will have eight dots around it. It'll be in a bracket. You'll have a negative two charge on the outside because it accepted two valence electrons, and since sodium gave up one each, it would have a plus one. Okay. Now you can either write it that way or... I will accept it as an Na plus one with a little subscript two, indicating that you have two of them. Make sure you put sulfur in a bracket with its negative two charge on the outside and eight dots like that, okay? Okay, you don't have to show me all of this work. You can simply remember that the metal will always simply be its symbol with its usual charge in the upper right hand corner and then the non-metal will always have eight dots on it. It'll be in a bracket and it'll have its usual charge in the upper right hand corner, okay? So on the worksheet, you have to write the chemical formula first, just like we did here, and then you can do the Lewis structure.